This is just a quick introduction to smart facilities management using intelligent digital twins and it will give you a common operating picture that puts you in control. When we talk to asset managers and facility owners, we hear some of the challenges that they see is really around asset monitoring, uh, prioritizing repairs, budget constraints, emergencies and unplanned events, trying to coordinate with other departments, uh, vandalism, public misuse, regulatory compliance, technology integration, vendor and contract management, public engagement and, and feedback, staff training and management, and also environmental concerns. So quite a complex set of challenges that facilities managers are trying to address. And digital twins help in some way to address some of this. So some of the typical applications are use cases, and these are, uh, th this is just a, f a few examples um, that digital twins are being applied to in facilities management. It's really around predictive maintenance for infrastructure, um, helping with asset monitoring and prioritizing repairs, having sensors there, it can predict when assets may fail, um, and it can use all sorts of algorithms and things like that. We'll, we'll dive a little bit deeper into it, and I'll show you some examples of how it does that. Another application area or use case is around resource optimization and budgeting, uh, really helping with budget constraints, which quite often is one of the bigger challenges for facilities compared to other industries. We also deal quite often with things like disaster response and recovery from that. So knowing when certain, ev certain events and uh, emergencies, unplanned events happen um, and what can be done um, with that operations intelligence, real-time intelligence, getting that common operating picture, knowing what to do next. The other uh, key challenge that we that we address with digital twins is in integration to other external systems. And quite often, there's a whole bunch of departments in different silos that don't really well work well together. And it's one of the benefits that a digital twin can bring is being able to integrate that. So, for example, if a rainwater main uh, breaks or is predicted to 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 break then that information can be relayed to things like traffic and ma traffic management systems and other applications and and systems that are in the organization and quite often the influence of the public and trying to keep them involved as well as updated is one of the key use cases that again is slightly different in facilities management to what we see in some of the other industries. Now, this is all around um, very specific use cases. And if we come from a control or automation engineering background, uh, you should be familiar with this ISO 95 model, which is kind of the Purdue model or how we control, have controllers and things in the plants and um, throughout our, our facilities and how that rolls up into SCADA systems and uh, the different uh, management systems. So th those are typically referred to as, as um, distributed control systems and in facility management they vary depending on what the type of infrastructure it is that you are trying to manage. So if you go to pump uh, water filtration plants, pumping stations, more sophisticated than what you find in some of the um, recreational services areas like parks and some of the others but what we've done is we've taken that same picture and kind of flipped it over and said so what what, what does a digital twin provide for you if you've got a distributed um, control system on the one hand this gives you a distributed intelligence system by using all of these different use cases and that's the main difference between having a digital twin and just have for those previous few use, use cases that I showed just have um, some point solutions that that work in isolation. What you can now do is at your facilities level, at the at the plant level, you can have multiple different use cases. And uh, again, we'll touch on, on, on some of them. I'll show you examples of that. But we can start rolling them up, integrating a more comp uh, uh, um, uh, composite twin that gives us a better tactical view. So this might be operational at the lower level getting to a, a more of a tactical view at the next level and then being able to bring in business logic, business rules um, and models at, at, a, at a higher level which will give us the ability to create this control tower. Now if we combine the two we actually get a new level 
a strategic level and that's the common operating picture or this executive control tower that gives us the opportunity to to make better decisions even though at level one where the digital twin operate its use case is still very specific like we saw in the previous example where or the the, the previous slide where we uh, it's specifically around certain asset m maintenance or event response or those but it's the combination of being able to bring all of that together that's the real benefit of the digital twin and now you also have some levers that you can pull um, depending on budget states or um, some other um, uh, uh, operational or strategic levers that you may have, you can change some of the business rules and that will influence how these digital twins then um, behave. So can we spend more money on predictive maintenance? Um, what, what is the situation with our staffing um, in terms of resources and, and, and that kind of thing? So this is the real opportunity with digital twins being able to create this common operating picture uh, by stringing together or building it up from multiple different use cases so the core focus for us is around the use case and the way that we like to do this in practice so how do we actually build this is um, to create this common operating picture we've got the assets on the left hand side and then um, we have this capability which we call data stream designer that can suck information from multiple different systems and it can transform it, it can apply some analytics to it and we can then create some actions coming out of that. We can also bring in things like AI into this and I'll be showing you some examples of what this looks like in, in an actual application um, for predictive maintenance. You don't always have to have the AI side of it. Sometimes we just have engineering calculations, thresholds, those kind of things, more condition monitoring. But as we move to predictive maintenance and predictive use cases, predictive operations, we start bringing in more AI. The XM Pro app designer is the third element. So this is the visualization. And this visualization is not there to replace existing 3D um, GIS models or point uh, uh, um, uh, 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 scans and things that we've done or um, BIM models or, or that. It is really taking those and actually using some of those user interfaces like GIS systems and putting the contextual information around it with recommendations, which is the next step. That's actually what you really want when certain events occur or likely to occur you want to create a recommendation for someone to do something. It might be to investigate it, it might be to repair it, it might be to um, discard it. It doesn't matter what, it, what, the, what the outcome is. Different scenarios will have different outcomes, but how can we make sure that we have consistency around what the recommended action is so that we can empower our people processes and provide some automation around this as we go forward? around certain areas or outcomes in our operations. A little bit more sophisticated version of the same um, common I'm writing pictures. I've got all of these things on the left hand side sensors. I've got all of these systems inside my organization and I'm trying to get the response done with people, processes and automation. And what we do, we have this um, user interface where we can in a visual way build the data streams. Again, get data from multiple different systems, apply analytics to it, provide context to it. So not only do I can I bring in sensor data, but I can bring in maintenance records, I can bring in weather data, I can bring in all sorts of data and build a, for my specific problem, a, um, a data stream that will feed and give me the, the information that I need to create a common operating picture. And in this common operating picture, you can see at the operational level at the bottom, the tactical level, which is the planning level, and at the strategic level, everyone's looking at the same data, but through a different lens, for different reasons, for different things that they want to see. At the top, it's more KPIs. At the middle level, it's more around planning. When, are we have, when do we have multiple things um, in the workshop at the same time? And we're over capacity, so we can't actually deal with that. And at the bottom, you know, looking at the actual facility and while I'm there, what's happening um, to it. But it's all the same data. And this is what we call event intelligence. And now when certain events occur, based on the real-time data, 
we can turn that into operations intelligence for uh, for um, the decision support. And if we combine that with recommendations, which is a key element of our solution, through our recommendation manager and recommendation rules, that can also bring in from other alarms and alerts and things that you may have in the organization. But at this, at the highest level and at the lowest level, it all works the same. And you can combine all sorts of different systems to create a set of recommendation rules. And I'll be showing you what that looks like. It enables you to empower the smartest people in your business to pull the levers, as I mentioned earlier. It will reduce the risk of being blindsided by key business events that are happening or likely to happen. And it also improves the accountability because you now create a, a feedback loop, a closed loop feedback system, um, so that you have the visibility around, you know, are we getting better? Are we closing the work orders? You know, is the facility running better? So you can create those closed loop uh, monitoring capability that also improves the accountability for that. As you can see, we've got some uh, elements in terms of what is in Exxon Pro. Um, so we call that our intelligent digital twin suite. It consists of four different areas, the data stream designer, AI, the app designer, and the recommendation manager. And before we go into that, I'd like to highlight uh, something, something that we quite often see when we talk about digital twins. People just see the visualization part. They see this really nice digital twin user experience um, that has got dashboards, it's got BI, it's got 3D, it's got AR, VR, all sorts of really nice looking visual interaction. The challenge with that is uh, that that is just the visualization. Like this iceberg, the real challenge, 80% of the work sit below the surface and that is where you need to make sure that it's safe, secure, reliable, that it's trustworthy. You need to be able to integrate all of these different systems and then wrangle that data, provide analytics over that. Being able to bring in things like AI, uh, that it's not just standalone, but it's, that it's baked into the business process. And then creating these recommendations that can run on top of that. That is all the things that are required to actually build a successful digital twin at the end of the day. It's not just about the user interface that sits at the top um, and quite and, and what we're starting to see in some instances we don't even need a user interface because we can automate the whole process for those tedious uh, things that you actually don't want a human to to get involved with so what i'll be doing next is taking you through an example we'll just take the predictive maintenance for infrastructure and looking at a facility management um, uh, uh, application at a very high level in terms of how we how we address that specific challenge now for us from a smart asset management point of view it is really how do we connect to the data how do we provide the recommendations and alerts for the planning teams to be able to to plan work then actually create the work orders work requests into the back-end systems that you may already have and um, augment that with additional information so that it's not just this, uh, things like um, s um, safety information, additional context, operational information that you can actually pass on to that work order and request to make it more rich. And then also checking or verifying that the work has been done. So for us, that's the closed loop process that we like to follow around smart asset management. And in terms of uh, use cases for facilities management, we see applications around condition monitoring, prescriptive maintenance, predictive maintenance, uh, machine intelligence. This is where we're getting to more of the real-time operational side of things or uh, autonomous operations. And uh, from, a from a technology aspect, it uses things what we call composable, so we can make reusable blocks. So we don't have to build it every single time. Make some really smart integration automate some of the business process areas of that and we try to do all of this in a no-code application development which uh, environment which i'll show you so that you don't have to code the stuff and lastly the real objective of this is that you can um, reduce downtime increase the asset life and the cost that you have around it but we also see more and more that there's an emphasis on the ESG side of things, the environmental, societal, and government, uh, the, 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 the governance requirements. So that is the objective of 
of using digital twins to help you with smart asset management. Now, uh, before we go into the example, I'd also just take a, a, a brief minute to explain how we often see the journey happens because um, you may have so many different things that you could potentially do. And one of the approaches is to look at from a for the predictive maintenance, condition monitoring, prescriptive maintenance type um, use cases is to go and look at or analyze who are the bad actors and what percentage of impact do they have so you can see the size of the block they represent that. I can also then look for a certain bad actor, maybe say it's a, in the pump stations uh, and certain centrifugal pumps. I can look at the type of failure modes that they have, you know, is it bearing failure, seal failures, um, whatever it may, may be. And then for those failure modes, try to understand what the root causes are. And the reason why, that, why we want to have the root cause is so that we know what to look for. So what are the lead indicators that tell us something is causing, so that which will cause a certain failure and that results in the bad actor. So now that we understand what the root causes are, and, quite, and, and uh, the, 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 this is really the bread and butter of a lot of maintenance organizations that, that we have right, the, or, or the, the work that we see being done right now. So uh, understanding what the root causes are, and then look for what are the lead indicators for that root cause. So is it the, is it the, the, uh, pr um, the plan maintenance history, the tonnage, the motor amps, the vibration, the flow, the whatever the lead indicators are. And at, from what systems do we need to bring them so that we can create these rules, either rule-based, AI-based, the person who's been there 30 years and also applying some engineering calculations um, because most of the things that we do still subscribe to the laws of physics, so we can use our engineering calculations um, to do that. So that's just some of the approach that we take, but to get back to how the software works, let me jump in and uh, briefly show you. So I'm gonna start with, with again, with this picture. We have the data stream designer, um, and that gives us the ability to uh, Im embed AI as well. Uh, the visualization aspect is in the app designer, and um, we have the recommendation manager that drives it. I will start with the app designer, number three, the, the user interface. So if you recall um, our tip of the iceberg, I'll start with the application designer, um, show you what the, what, uh, or how we, uh, the, um, the, 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 the information, the interaction, and then I'll show you behind the scenes, below the waterline, how we do this. 